Hey everybody, welcome, welcome to Interstage Window, um, our Saturday stream where we have a conversation about something role play related. And today I have with me two of my friends. So y'all go ahead, introduce yourselves. Well, Rock, it's paper, your... scissors. Oh, wow. <laughs> go ahead, you're the guest, you go first. <laughs> uh, I'm Kendra, here to talk and be validated. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we're here to yep. validate you, Kendra. Yes. Always. That is why I come here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and who else is here today? Uh, your favorite omniscient voice in the background, me, Landon. How are you guys? Oh, I am good. I am so good. I'm so happy to be to be streaming again today. And, uh, and I, I mean, this weekend has been nice. It was so rainy and gross last weekend, so... I'm really, I've been really pleased this so far this weekend. See, you say that as I just had a big pile of wet, melting <laughs> snow <laughs> hit my leg. Yeah. Ah, she's, saying high, that after, she's saying that after we got a, a foot and a half of snow this week. Uh, you did. Be like, the weather is beautiful. <laughs> you yeah. did. Here it was just rain. So now that it's not like raining constantly, it's not too bad. <laughs> We're under an avalanche warning over here. And I'm just like, okay. You could move farther south. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I absolutely do not want to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the hydrate, Ty. So happy to see you here today. Um, all right, Hi, guys. Dad. All right, guys. So um, before we get into it, uh, I guess let's tell everybody what we're going to talk about today. Um, Landon, what's our topic? Our topic is events and how to throw the best event for your RP. Yeah. Because even if you're in denial about needing events, every single group event and even one-on-one -on -one events or one-on-one -on -one RPers need events. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I would say it even tabletop. To even tabletop. <laughs> well, I'll talk about that later. But I think no matter what kind of role play you're running, like it doesn't matter. You need to be doing events. That is how yes. you keep longevity. That is how you make your role play last. So we're going to talk so about that today. Yeah, we're going to talk about the difference between because last week we obviously talked about plot a lot of the time, and so we're going to talk about like what the difference between an event and a and plot drop is, and. And all of those important things, why to do events, how best to do events, and um, how we personally as a mod team do events. Yes. <laughs> yes. All so, of that good stuff. But before we talk about all of that, Ms. Karen Terry, can you tell me what your favorite thing of the week is? Okay. Yes, I can. And I actually want to show you guys something first. So I added something to the stream. So I know a lot of you guys um, are here basically because you love me and that's really the main reason. So... <laughs> If you ever want to come just to support me, but you're not really like watching the stream or like engaged, watch what you can do now. I showed this off Thursday, but I know a lot of you guys only come to the Saturday stream. So look what you type into the chat. And oh, now I know you're here, but you're not really here. So um, nice way to announce yourself without me being like, hey, and trying to talk to you, you know. <laughs> so you guys can do that on the stream now. Um, I've also added a bunch of other fun stuff in the channel points. Please check those out. Okay. For real now, favorite thing. Um, okay. So... I'm so glad Bree is here because I told you guys last time. Oh, Landon, you're such a liar. You're not lurking. You're on the stream. <laughs> I well, she's kind of troll. Left. I just didn't want to be left out. Stop <gasps> Stop judging uh -huh. me like that. Okay, okay. I won't <laughs> yeah. judge you. Um, so, Bree, I'm so <laughs> glad you're here because I told you guys my deep, deep love for um, all dressed chips. And we have not been able to find them for a long time. But look at what my husband brought me from the store today this okay if you love snacks you have got to try these <laughs> chips okay they're the best chips ever look we call them canada chips because look number one in canada okay these things are delicious i'm not going to open them right now because i don't want to get chip stuff in my teeth before i talk a lot on stream but you best bet i'm going to have a whole bunch of these after stream i just my favorite thing is that i love how much america is just like it's maple syrup, so therefore it must be Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> but it's not. Like, it's not really maple syrup. Okay, so I'll read you what it is. Okay, I bet you're wondering what all dressed means. After all, in America, it just means you're wearing all your clothes. But in Canada, 
All dress <laughs> oh actually my... means delicious, ridgy <laughs> chips that somehow taste salty, savory, and sweet all at the same time. Sound good, eh? And it's not lying. That is exactly what they taste like. Salty, savory, and sweet all at the same time. It's crazy. <laughs> it's the A for me. It's the sounds good A for me. <laughs> it's the in America, all dress <laughs> means you've got all your clothes on. <laughs> I feel like it's a chip mansplaining something to me. That's what the that's <laughs> yes. is. No, no, the you fact I, that chip was. I guess because I don't have a Canadian accent, it doesn't sound like all nice, but, I, but imagine I read that in a Canadian accent. So you feel like, you know, like very soft and warm no, about it. Still feel no, it's no. <laughs> No one can make that sound nice. I don't care if you're Idris Elba. That will not sound nice. Oh, it would. It would sound condescending, but international. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> hey, Naomi. So happy you're here with us today. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite thing. They're freaking delicious. Bree, try refreshing the stream if it's doing that for you. Um, that might help. Uh, so sorry, you're having the, the bad internets. Landon can commiserate with you. She used to have very, very bad internets. <laughs> you know, they promise better internet and then it's like not actually better internet. Oh, it's like that sometimes, isn't it? Although now I can actually officially watch the stream. So it is slightly better internet. It's just not good internet. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, well, it's not horrible internet anymore, right? Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, does that matter though? If it's bad, it's bad. I mean, before, uh, I, like, she could do, there was so many things that she couldn't do at all, like, period. Yeah, like, hey, I could Erica. watch the stream on Twitch and also be on the stream. Yeah, it was too it was much. She could do one or the other. She could not do both. It was so annoying. <laughs> and it's not my computer because my laptop is brand new and beautiful. So it was, it's not my computer processing. It is literally my internet. That's so weird. <laughs> all right. Well, while I get the game going, um, Kendra, why don't you tell us your favorite thing this week? Uh, my favorite thing is my coffee order from my local coffee stand. <laughs> it, it is, yeah, uh, shop local, support small businesses, blah, blah, blah. No, I just really like my nice hot coffee and the coffee stand. Half of the time I go there, they already have it. my order ready to go. <laughs> Oh, bless. That's it's beautiful. It's so sweet. Is it I love just them a, so Is it much. just like a black coffee or like a specialty coffee? Absolutely, it's not a black coffee. I don't know. <laughs> you could be like one of those people. <laughs> I, do I sound like one of those people? No, but I don't know. You sometimes confuse me, Kendra. <laughs> okay, okay, I like that. No, it's a vanilla chai with four shots of white coffee. Oh, that sounds so good. That sounds so good. <laughs> it's I like, want one. <laughs> it's like a hug from a childhood friend oh. is what that tastes like. And I just... Oh, oh. I love the way that you said that, that you're just like, it's from a childhood friend and I can feel it. I was yeah, like, oh, I feel it too. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is my one talent, describing things uh, <laughs> with completely unrelated phenomena. Oh, you but it's so real writer. though. <laughs> oh, you know, I've been thinking about getting into this thing called roleplay recently. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tell me oh. Oh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> All right, I miss some I miss some people coming in. Hey Jane, hey Erica, hi Cass. Cass, if you're able to to uh keep like your laptop or phone open, you can lurk. Type uh, exclamation lurk and then we know you're you're here loving on us even though you can't really talk cuz you're sleeping. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I need Russians. to interrupt this. I just saw my photo. <laughs> <laughs> and I am the the great Timothy Chalamet. Uh, I had to. And also, Jame Jameson Boone is this. Oh my goodness, I am so happy. <laughs> that I was blessed with this beautiful face. We're going to talk about <laughs> events, and you were so inspired by this recent event. I mean, obviously this is what we had to do. Yeah, I bet the rules in order to get to slide on in there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it worked. Okay, it worked. Sometimes I, that's um, what you got to do. That's what events are for, to inspire your players. <laughs> it's very true. Ta-da, stream done. <laughs> um, all right, so Kendra's, Kendra's local coffee. That's yes. Good so, Landon, tell us your favorite thing. Um, I have... <laughs> A couple, but I'll only talk about one. Okay. Hmm. Um, it is okay. So as everyone knows, I've just moved, mm -hmm. 
which means that my house is a consistent incoming of boxes from a variety of different places coming here because it's like, oh, I need things for my house. Um, yeah, because you own it now. Tiny apartment. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> So sometimes there'll be like just boxes that show up and I'll be like, I have, it feels very much like Christmas because I'm like, I don't, I know I paid for all of this. Don't know what it is though. Bought um, too many things. Now it's a surprise. <laughs> now it's a surprise, which I know sounds like a really, really, you know, rich person, first world problem. But uh, one particular box arrived that I had not forgotten that I had purchased, but it was not for my house. So I was very surprised about it. Mm -hmm. And that is a box of Thin Mint cookies. It's actually a box of five packages of Thin Mint cookies. Oh my god! In the next six months. Um, load. Yeah, oh yeah, because I forgot that my friends. Mm -hmm nieces were selling them via online and yep. that they could then ship to any state because i don't know any children here that sell them um because none of my friends here have children but my mm -hmm. friends other places do and i was like oh i'll get me some mint chocolate chip cookies because they're my favorite snacks <laughs> um and so then a box of just heaven arrived and that is my favorite thing that happened this week i love that so <laughs> much I'm yes, so Jane. jealous. One good one is currently in the freezer. Two are on the top of my kitchen counter, so I don't reach for them. One might have already been eaten. And um <laughs> Wait, does that trick work on you if you're tall? No, but it's just <laughs> it's like more inconvenient. <laughs> inconvenient. And sometimes like enough time passes that you forget that it's in the back of the cupboard on the top shelf that you're just like, oh, this thing is here. Oh. Yay snack. Oh, okay, okay. So it's more about like if you can't see them all the time that you forget. Because I'm thinking like, for me, it's like a lot of extra effort if I put stuff up there because I got to get the stool out and stuff to climb up. But I was like, I don't think Landon uh -huh. has to do that. So how does that? No. <laughs> now that you, you just reach. Now that you're saying that, what I could do is I could put it on my like lowest shelf. Oh. In the back. Oh. So I'd have to like literally get down on my hands and knees for these cookies. Oh, perfect. That's a smart idea. <laughs> that would be like your version of, of what I do when I put it up high. Yeah, Just... be like, is it worth bending down? Uh, is it worth getting a step stool? Same kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You put them underneath your unseasonal clothes in the drawer. Oh, that's a good good hiding spot too. Yes, but then that breaks my rules. I have a new rule that there's no food allowed in the same room in which I keep my clothes. Oh, so that's <laughs> a good idea. I mean, you really shouldn't be keeping food in your bedroom anyway. That yeah. is a very good rule. It's really but, just something when you live with roommates that you have to do out of necessity. You really shouldn't do that. I'm like, once, <laughs> if a roommate moves in or if I, you know, eventually have other people living with me, then that is something that I probably will continue to do. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, no, you monsters can't have my Thin Mints. <laughs> but until then, it's just trying to hide it from me and it really is, that's like a whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's understood you have well, I'm, thin I'm so, so happy for you that you have thin mints um uh, samoas are my go-to for girl scout cookies but thin mints are pretty far up there i mean i think that's a respectable choice for favorite girl scout cookie for sure yeah it's uh i think that they're my only i like that maybe tagalongs is that the peanut butter one yeah they're the yeah. chocolate and they have peanut butter like on top of the cookie then there's they're okay, of chocolate. but here's the thing that i do i literally bite kind of halfway into it and then i scrape the peanut butter chocolate off with my teeth and then i don't eat the cookie part and what? then i might as well have had a reason are you my child <laughs> Lin Lin i'm actually seven yes that's how eliza eats her cookies <laughs> the superior way of eating is, is a uh tag along cookie that's the only good part i don't like bread though so you i don't like some cookies lies just lies from your mouth like this is not <laughs> this is not how people normal people live their lives landed <laughs> did i ever claim to be normal no. at any time mm -mm. you just Thank not you. <laughs> like bread i don't like bread yeah no we've discovered this yeah. morning in the rp that i don't like breakfast and i don't like bread which i mean i've, I've known these facts before and they still surprise me every time so <laughs> <laughs> What's the draw of Olive Garden for you? Uh, pasta. Mm. Uh, okay. <laughs> they do have lots of pastas. But also, like, Olive Garden, there's so many superior restaurants to go to. It's true. <laughs> um, I'm... 
in Po Young. Kendra's like, I have to leave now. Uh, <laughs> okay, wait, we gotta we gotta stop the food talk for Kendra. We can move on to the real topic. <laughs> Sorry, Kendra. <laughs> I don't have those options. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> We love you anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Right. How do we want to get started, Landon? Start us off on the real topic. <laughs> well, the real topic is me all along. Just kidding. <laughs> um, of course it is. <laughs> Part of the brand. Of that. Um, let's yeah. talk about building an event. Okay. How do we? Yeah. How do we? How do we do this? What are we looking for? Okay. So first thing that I want to do for sure is to. Yeah define what an event is yes. so last time on the show we talked about plots right and and creating a plot from scratch and all of that beautiful stuff so just to contrast that when i'm talking about a, an event what i'm really talking about is anything that is run by the mods or the admins in a role play that is outside of kind of the normal course of the role play. So I'll give a few examples. Say you're playing um, Dungeons and Dragons, right? And, and your, your game is primarily like a dungeon crawl. Like you go into dungeons, you get loot, um, you know, you do missions inside dungeons, da, da 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 stuff like that. An event in that game would be like, okay, guys, um, we're going to go to a masquerade ball next session. And that's what the next session is about, like something different. You know, or like, hey, everybody falls asleep and we have this dream sequence where now you're all Pokemon trainers, right? Like something that is not go into a dungeon, kill monsters, get loot, because that's your normal game. So this is all relative to your normal game, right? So if we're talking about like a text-based role play like we like to do, it's going to be something where it's like the mods and admins set up maybe a plot drop or something of that nature that the players don't know is coming. So all of a sudden they have to adjust all of their writing and plots that they're doing to what you've dropped in their lap. It's just something that they've set up that's outside the normal course of the gameplay that's meant to kind of refresh and reinvigorate everybody in, that's in the roleplay. Yeah, I also think that it um, is something that a plot is a defined thing, right? That's yep. kind of how we settled on, is that it is something that happens. It is black and white and done. And yes, the way you get there and how you decide to do it and how you react off of that is all the things that you don't, that aren't controlled and aren't defined. But a plot is defined. Mm -hmm. An event isn't. Nope. An event oftentimes can be like, it can be this thing happened, how do you react? But a lot of the times it's, we're throwing a ball. Mm -hmm. Or, or um, you know, suddenly all of the monkeys got loose from the zoo. <laughs> What do you do? Like, it, it allows for more plots or more things to come from um, a situation rather than this thing happened, move on. Yes. Yes, bingo. Exactly. I think you can all, it also, there's an element of optionalness to an event. Not always. Like, sometimes we have events where the way that they're structured, you end up having to participate. But they're they're not the main plot and so if someone is busy and they can't participate right then it's not going to like destroy everything for their character to where they can't come back and uh and and still engage with the role play right yep exactly yeah whereas a plot it's not really optional you have to engage with it <laughs> it's the yeah, basis I, I think that there are some events that aren't optional or are a lot harder to get around yep but the level of investment you want to have in an event, such as it's something that you mention, your character mentions in passing mm -hmm. in another unrelated mm -hmm. thread and you never write a thread that exists within that, in that uh, event, to building a character based around that event. Like there, there's the levels that you can get there from. Yes. Uh, and I think that that's something that the event allows, whereas plots don't. Plots will inherently... And plot drops will inherently affect your character story, Bingo. whether you like it or not. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Whether you like it or not is a huge <laughs> caveat With, there. And I think that it needs to be necessary, like because that's like some sometimes the the inherent problem, or sometimes that is really what people find difficult in group RPs is the lack of control there. Like they can't control the plot drops, especially if. There's an admin team that really likes to drop plots rather than events. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. you get less control over your story. Mm -hmm. um, the, the secret to those 
is to have an admin who reads everybody's threads and builds the thought drops around that. Yeah, well, we'll but, get into that a little uh, bit later. We'll get into that a little bit later about like what, what you should be doing to kind of uh, create these events. Um, but uh, spoilers yeah, spoilers for, spoilers for later. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so it's, it is like that it gives the it gives a little bit more choice and a little bit more control back into the players hands um mm -hmm. while also making them have to shake it up a little bit mhm mm mhm mm which and, is oh, and good yes is the whole point and is to necessary. make you feel inspired and refreshed like that is the whole yes. point of what you're doing like that's the goal and and like we and like we said that there are multiple ways of doing that like a masquerade ball is probably the most troped way, <laughs> but it's entertaining and it's good because everybody loves it. Loves that trope. Okay, everybody it's loves a it. Trope that's it's why fun. Bingo. That's why in the current role play that we're doing in Freya's Voyage, the first event was it's big old party because everybody <laughs> likes that. <laughs> yeah, but like even then, it was there's it's a big old party, but it's a big old party everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to go. Your character doesn't have to go to this one restaurant and be there while this thing happens true and it, it, we literally gave them especially in our especially in this first example we gave them like you could be here or here you could be there or there you could be doing this drinks are half price at every bar so it's at least like you could go anywhere true yes <laughs> absolutely actually actively happening so unless you're truly trying to avoid it <laughs> it's really easy to engage with this. Yeah, it should, it should be, right? It should be easy to engage with an event. It shouldn't and, be hard. I mean, but that's part of the should be, right? Yeah. That's part of the, the what should you do that we'll talk about later because there certainly have been, in our experiences, events that have not been easy to engage with. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we've run some events that were like, that was a bad oh, idea. Yeah. <laughs> Why did we do that? <laughs> yes. That's how you learn. <laughs> True. So yeah, that's what an event is. I feel like that's a pretty good basis of our of our definition of kind of what we're working with here. Yeah. Um. So I guess our next step would be when is a good time to have an event and why is a good time to have an event? And I know we talked about like shaking up plots and, and getting inspired, but like, what does that actually look like? Yeah. Kendra, do you want to go first on this? was actually going to say i want to hear your reasoning again for the schedule of events that we oh, have in freya okay because i love knowing just like as a a player i love knowing that okay on the first wednesday something is going to happen mm. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We can talk about that. So part of me realizes, I part of me questions though, if, uh, at least in our RP, if people have picked up on that <laughs> or if that is just, well, somebody, somebody asked, no, schedule. somebody asked and I told you, and I told you guys, um, that okay. that was the schedule. I, I don't know if yeah. everybody was paying attention to the chat when that happened, but someone like lit straight up asked and I said, this is how we're doing it. Yeah. I didn't know if that was a, it was in the mod chat or if that was in the, um, group chat. Oh, I thought yeah, it was in a regular. couple different places. It might be, but, but I was, that was just my curious that I was like, how, who's picked up on that? Or is, it just us? <laughs> no. or is Kendra giving away our secrets? <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I can talk about that for sure. So when it comes to events, something that this is something that I have discovered, I have to ha know like when my events are going to happen or I just won't do them. I won't plan events if I don't have a schedule for myself. So like, for example, in Magic Reborn, the events were holidays. Uh, and the holidays were all based on like the, yeah. the eight like Wiccan calendar holidays. I think there's eight of them, whatever that is. Right. And so then every like month and a half ish, uh, we would have an event, right. That was centered around that holiday. Um, in Freya's voyage, because we have like this whole point system, which, um, we'll talk about that a little bit more yeah. later. Uh, I'm doing monthly events because in my mind, I'm thinking like, about monthly is probably how often people need to have some kind of character progression to feel like those points are worth it, right? Um, when I have run tabletop games before, events happen when a player can't show up and, and we don't have a good way to write them out of the current plot. Okay, then we'll do an event so that they're not missing anything, right? Um, yeah. so, so that's, so for me, 
the schedule needs to make sense to what the role play is, but you have to decide something because if you don't like what's what i did in atlantis which made it from my perspective not go the way that it should have um i never i never created that and so that just meant that events didn't happen i just i just didn't do them um so you have to have some kind of metric in your head of when you're going to do your events and it has to match the goals of your role play yeah and i think also if you go into it with the mindset of we will have events when we need to have events then you will never have events <laughs> No, and not even that you'll never have events because even if you do have events, there's already an issue, right? Yeah, you, you wait until there's a problem. You're slowing down and need to be re-engaged. Uh -huh. It's so much harder to re-engage someone in an already developed story than to keep them engaged. Yes. Whereas they're, if you have a schedule like, and they know something's coming at certain yeah. times, then they're going to be excited. Or even get to the point where they'll they'll never be bored. Yeah. <laughs> like, or even get to the point that they're not even looking forward to the next event. They're just they're riding it out, and there there's no lull. Mm -hmm. Um, which I know, like after a while, um, when when our peas go longer, that that will happen no matter what. You'll have a lull, um, between events no matter what, no matter how close together your events are. Mm -hmm. But especially up front in the beginning, um, being able to have a schedule thing that is a good that flows well with the rp is an important way to keep keep players engaged mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's why we're doing it the whole point of events is to increase engagement because the thing is is everyone to some extent wants their hand held and yes. i'm not saying that you should be holding your players hands i mean we've talked about that type of thing in, in various other topics you shouldn't be doing that but that doesn't mean that you just let them go and think that they're going to do everything by themselves they will not they will go away and find a mod that will help them along you know <laughs> well and that's the thing too is that if people wanted to be in charge of their own stuff like a story and and plot and all of that they would be modding their own RP. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> or they'd be, or they or they'd be one on one. Book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so they they're not. Yeah. So just letting them go, they don't inherently by being a part of a developed RP, they don't want to have that responsibility and power. Yeah. Um, they've chosen that. They, wrong, <laughs> they eventually want to join the mod team, maybe. But even then, that's you know its own thing. Um, it's just. It's the draw yeah. of an RP is the collaborative storytelling yep. for most yeah. people. And you cannot have a collaborative storytelling experience if you as the mod are not helping foster that environment. Yep. Yeah. And, and inherently, it's your job as the mod to make these decisions. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and that I know sometimes for some people it'll be like, but I don't want to make these decisions. I just want to be a player. Well, you're not. You're a mod. Yeah. It's too <laughs> so, late. Yeah. <laughs> you picked uh, the wrong thing to do, friend. Yep. If that's how yeah. you feel, you should be joining other people's role plays, right? You shouldn't mm -hmm. be making them. Yes, exactly. You should be joining other people's role plays, which there's no, like, there's no shame in that. There are people who just want to be players, and that's awesome. Yeah. I don't have the type of patience for that. I'm not that kind of person. Uh, I like to have by patience, <laughs> by like patience have... she means she has control issues, but we love her I anyway. Have... <laughs> we talked about this. We have I am aware. <laughs> and everyone else does too. That's why we're writers. That's true. Anyway. Yeah. But yeah, if somebody doesn't want that aspect, y'all are a hundred percent right. They're going to be yeah. writing a book by themselves. They're going to be one-on-one -on -one role playing. They're going to be running their own role plays, right? Like all, they're going to be doing one of those things. They're not going to be a player joining a role play, right? Exactly. Yeah. And there, and that's just the reality of it. So when it comes to events, knowing how to like keep those players still engaged, but also making it so the mod team isn't doing all of the heavy lifting to keep the plot moving forward. I think mm -hmm. that's also an important part of this balance. Yes. As far as the when and the why. Mm -hmm. You don't want to feel like you have to plan an event every single weekend in order to keep your players entertained <laughs> um, or engaged. 
<laughs> oh yeah uh -huh. <laughs> yeah if it becomes that extreme you've got some other problem your players shouldn't be needing like that level of commitment from you uh, but like <laughs> that sounds yeah. terrifying yeah but i guess i guess in a way like i'm ex i'm kind of like referring to that as also as like D D. people get together in D D, and then they'll play for hours and especially there's that kind of role play where everyone's online online at the same time mm -hmm. and if all of a sudden every yeah. single weekend you need some sort of storyline that you're modding or basically being a dun dungeon master for um that can get exhausting especially on text-based role play yep well that's why i think a lot of successful DD &D groups that actually end up playing long term um you know it's not one dungeon master the whole time i mean some of them are and, and some people really love being dungeon master and so they'll just do that the whole time but what i actually see being really super successful in a lot of tabletop groups is like um, sometimes someone else DMs, you know, sometimes yeah. there's a guest DM or sometimes it's like, okay, well, this, this, uh, another person's going to do the next campaign or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that, that helps and mm -hmm. that's good. Yes. Um, but when coming to events, sitting there and, and knowing that good balance of when is enough, enough and not too much and not too little. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and like you said, Karen, it, Differs for the RP. What worked for for uh, Freya's voyage would not have worked for um, MR for Magical no. Reborn, mm -hmm. um, and 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 it wouldn't have worked necessary for uh, LL, L O O H or any of the past RPs that we've had, um, and it wouldn't have worked for you know even one on one role, role plays. So it mm -hmm. really is independent and individual to each RP. Yeah. So we're going to keep mentioning Freya's Voyage over and over in this, so I just want to kind of explain. We're doing a bit of a different event system than what I have done in the past, so I don't have any content that explains it. So I just want to kind of put this out there. So we have added into this roleplay for the first time, we've added in some like mechanical character progression. So what that means is that um, if you participate in an event, you get a spell point. And there is a rubric, there's like a, a spreadsheet where depending on how many spell points you have, your characters can gain new spells. Of course, there's magic in the roleplay because it's one of my roleplays. All of them have magic, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just a thing. Uh, yeah. so, so we actually have a little bit of character progression built in. And that's why they have to be as frequent as monthly, why we can't do them more infrequently, even though do I really think that my people need inspiration every single month like no but <laughs> when we promise some character progression we have to be a little bit more frequent than maybe if we didn't have that if we didn't have that we could probably do like i don't know every other month or something and y'all would be fine but yeah. i just yeah. threw the rubric i just threw the rubric in the um chat just so in case people were curious on the breakdown oh yeah yeah if y'all want to see a visual of exactly what i'm talking about that's the spreadsheet right there that's the image that landon just linked um, which is a different, it's a very different way of doing it. We're obviously not the first, and I know, um, D&D &D definitely has some sort of the, the mechanical character building aspects to, oh yeah, to <gasps> creating spells and gaining spells and creating powers, but it's been really interesting and I really have been enjoying it. Yeah, it's been uh, really fun so far. The two months that we've been doing it, <laughs> but it's been really, it's been really interesting, and it makes it makes characters also and people think long term. Yep. Um, yeah. Which I also really love because for a very long time it has been very much like that month to month, next event, to next event, or or not really thinking long term as a RP mind in general. Like yeah. we'll have players who are thinking long term. But because there is this, like, oh, I need three spell points in order to get a fourth spell or whatever, um, or third spell, then sitting there and being like, okay, how do I get there? What am I going to be doing? What am I going to want with that spell? Like, all of those are very long-term thing that, things that a lot of players are thinking. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Bree saying that, that, she's, that she loves that. Hey, Sasha, been a minute since I've seen you in the stream. So happy to have you here. Go ahead, Kendra. Sorry. I was just going to say that the level of creativity and forethought that goes into, because part of the mechanic is you have to apply for a spell where yeah. you name it and you describe what it does. And I would have never in a million years for any reason ever thought of about 90% of the things that people have submitted. <laughs> That's so spells. cool. <laughs> they are amazing. 
And it wouldn't have happened had the event not taken place to allow for that character growth. Mm -hmm. And I think part of the reason why we're in the event that we're in now is because after the first event, like, what was it, 90, 95% of all people's second (laughs) spells were combat oriented? Yeah. Did I pronounce the air quotes correctly there? Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) We heard them. And it was like, okay, okay, so the next event, handled. We got it. Great. This Mm -hmm. is what people want to do. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. Like, it was very obvious to me that that's what people wanted because that's what we got. You know, when it was time to apply for second spells, there was all these combat ones. And I was like, oh, people want to fight some stuff. All right, let's let's fight. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Fight time. <laughs> Fighty time. Y'all are some bloodthirsty. I'm just <laughs> I'm a little scared. Yeet. <laughs> <laughs> no, um and that's I think that that also allows for a lot of interest in events because a it makes people want to engage because they're getting something from it Mm -hmm. where in the past we haven't really had that the thing that they've been getting through it is plot development which is fun and enticing and awesome as that is some people don't want to engage with the plot overall they want to just hyper focus on their ships yep and so unless you have or hyper focus on the relationship like not just ships but any sort of relationship yeah like whether it's like oh they're a romantic ship or maybe they really just want to play like sisters or something like that or it doesn't yeah. matter like or they just want to play mm-hmm. with their with the you know a parent and child relationship and that's what they want to hyper focus on whatever it doesn't matter exactly um and if that event doesn't fit with those hyper-focused relationships that they want to or plots that they want to work on they will ignore the events which again is not necessarily a bad thing right that's not their fault that's our fault for not giving them something yeah and and also like there are just some there are also just some people who don't want to engage in the you okay there are some people who want to be in group RPs that don't want to be in group RPs. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, yes. that's not a call. That's not a call out, by the way. This this whole no. episode is a call out to me for the thing that I screwed up in Atlantis. Okay, <laughs> so anything I'm saying is like, oh, this is stuff that I'm doing better this time. <laughs> yeah, trust me, I have way better ways of being passive aggressive call outs than on here. It's fine. Um, <laughs> if I'm gonna call you out, I'll call you out by name. Um, <laughs> but no, I think that uh, it's. There are some people who don't want to engage in events, which Mm -hmm. again is fine because A, it's our fault for not making an event people want to engage in, but also because that's what they don't want to hyper focus on. Yeah. But um, what this new system does is that it allows for people who are even hyper focusing on those relationships and plots to be able to want to engage in it because they actually gain something other than plotting from it yes exactly Um, and before like we've done that before we did it a little bit with uh there was an event in um atlantis where we had like a prize giveaway um where a raffle or something that 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 uh characters actually got something in character or something and people engaged with that a little bit um but it was that same sort of feeling but it also like is overall story and outside of character stuff too because then it makes you think oh what am i going to do with this next spell mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep so they have a reason they have a reason to engage even if it's not immediately obvious how this could help their plots out right they're still like well let me think of something because i want that point because i want that new spell i'm excited about that yumi is going to vibrate now <laughs> <laughs> Is that her next one? And vibrating? I really, really want it to be. (laughs) I'm trying to peer pressure Kendra into making it happen. It It would be really good for the not so secret whorehouse that's happening on the silver level. I'm just saying. It would be. Um, Vibrating kitty. We could call it purring. It's cool. Um, (laughs) Exactly what Katie said. (laughs) I 100% am stealing this from Katie. I love it. The description was um, the. All the Yumi you know and love, but now she vibrates. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's perfect. That's it. I um, love it. I don't have to think of it. This is great. Time Thank into- you. One thing that can be <laughs> off-putting for events is that they require keeping track of several people and their characters. Oh, that can that, be true. That can absolutely be true, especially if you have what I think is the trickiest kind of event 
I like to call one room events. Mm -hmm. Everything is happening oh. in one room, mm -hmm. which means every single character's and plot's timeline has to kind of follow a series of events. Mm -hmm. um, or has to, if or in order to make it as canon as possible, has to like interact with something. So if someone is bitch slapping someone across the room, you would notice. You would notice. Someone would yeah. notice that. Or if there's a fight that breaks out, you would notice that. So how do you write your plots and your timeline in the same room as other things going on without actually wanting to like wait for everybody else to post because we also know what that feeling is as if we get involved with everyone posting one at a time. Yes, absolutely. I love that you asked this, Ty, because this is something we definitely wanted to talk about here at the beginning is that it's critical when you're designing events to make them accessible to everyone. Yes. And that is easier said than done, okay? That is easier said than done. But you have to do it because if you don't, then you end up in the situation that you've probably been in before, Ty, where somebody dropped an event and you're like, I can't do this because I'm in the UK and everyone else in the RP is on the West Coast and I'm gonna get left behind. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you have to consider the style of RP that you that you have and how you can engage every single person. And and that's going to, to exactly how you do that's going to vary depending on the type of role play, right? Because if you have a role play of like all 17 year olds that are all on the East Coast, okay, well, you can do a role play that's like this set time and everybody be in a chat room and, and that's fine, right? But if you have a role play that's like everyone's all spread out over the world and you've got a huge age range, well, you can't really do that because you're going to exclude people. And then also, um, kind of adjunct to that, you need to be aware of where people are in their plots. The first thing that you do, you do not want to throw a masquerade ball for the first ever event before couples or people have gotten into relationships. Yeah, because then what's the um, point? <laughs> yeah. Even if it fits your timeline, um, it might not fit everybody else's. Yep. And you really do want to make this as accessible and as inspiring as possible to the wider majority of the RP. Yep. Um, and sometimes it's hard to balance this mod because you sit there and go, but this would be so good for us right now. <laughs> um, but you but have it's to not about you. <laughs> that it's not about you. Yeah, yeah, this isn't you as a mod. It's not about you. Yeah. Um, and trying to balance that, I think, is also hard because you're also not in everybody else's shoes. Yeah. And the only way that you know what else that everyone else is going on with, as far as in order to make events, is if you read everything. <laughs> yeah. Which yep. is hard to do. And Which, I, I don't expect so, everyone to do it, but like, that's why I do it. That's why I read everything, is because otherwise yeah. I, I could not know what was happening with people and I couldn't know if they were okay or not. And I think that this also, I know we re restated this last week, but I think it needs to be restated this week. Uh, that's also why it's okay to ask where people's characters are if you are not up for reading everything. Mm -hmm. um, there should not be any shame in sitting there and being like, I don't understand what's happening. Um, like, I finally asked about the cults. That's how I realized there were two cults happening. I uh, thought there were one, <laughs> thought there was two. Uh <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops, all cults. <laughs> um, but being able to have that, like, sitting there and being like what is happening and asking as a player as a mod person to sit there and, and have an understanding of what is happening in your rp is necessary if you're going to do events which you should be doing yep even if you are reading everything being able to out of character hear and see yeah. how the players are engaging with their plots and how they are talking about their current threads is mm -hmm. very telling Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Even before this dropped, there were a lot of people who had been um itching to use their cool combat oriented stuff. And they were going to find a way, one way or another. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> Whether we gave it to them or not, it was going to happen. Yes. And this provides a really cool way for both to happen i think i'm definitely waiting for a couple showdowns between player characters mm -hmm. but they can perfect their techniques and how like they're thinking about it what they want to do with it before they go and fight each other they can fight some rando pirates 
Yes, absolutely. So, um, Kendra, let me ask you this, because I know that you are somebody that's, um, that's very busy, you know, you're a full-time mom and that sort of thing. So how do you, how do you keep up, like knowing what people's, what plots are going on just with the, the idea in mind that you often don't have time to read everything and yet you still pretty much know what's going on. So I would love to kind of get that out there. Like, how do you do it? I stay active in the out of character chats. Mm -hmm. I am making myself because I know that this is where I have problems in RPs is I I go quiet in out of character spaces mm. and then I lose interest in the RP as a whole because I forget how to insert my character into the plot mm. and you've neglected those relationships those out of character relationships yeah, I've neglected those out-of-character relationships, and I do not have time to read everything. <laughs> I skim a lot of it, but not all of it. So I I like Ooh, to... Yeah. And there are some players in this group that go so fast. <laughs> so much. They're excited. It is, <laughs> it is so impressive. But it's also like, I don't even know how I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. Very daunting just to look at like, oh my gosh, there's been 20 replies in this one channel between these three people. What is happening? Mm. I just go through the out of character. Mm -hmm. And I, because everybody, we have a really nice space where people are talking about other people's characters, where we are engaging with people outside of roleplay channels and outside of interactions i know that some of my characters have never interacted with certain characters but there's opinions that are that have been had <laughs> um, um i'm looking at leonie and her uh tooth <laughs> really is, um... <laughs> we love that <laughs> we love that plot point <laughs> i love that plot point so much but i have otp <laughs> I have no reason to interact with this character right now. And partly because Jane has taken on like 50 scenes at once. <laughs> um, R.I.P. To, to her. But also partly because any scene between either of my characters and those characters right now would just be random fluff and filler. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. But those are things that can be like, okay, so I know that they've seen each other. And I know that here's the base, whatever. Because in the out-of-character chats, there's just little off comments of like, oh, well, this is just the way this character is. This is how this character presents themselves. Mm -hmm. And I go, okay, so there's that. This is common knowledge for all the characters. Cool. And then the other half is going on the social media feed that we've instituted. <laughs> Rattato! <laughs> that was the best idea, I swear. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> but I'm also terrified. <laughs> Basically what we're getting here is our players terrify me. <laughs> uh, that's terrifying. good. That's good. That's it's what y'all like are supposed the, to do. <laughs> in the best way possible. Uh, I was talking with someone last night, like, okay, so there was this plot drop, and there was a vote. People voted. And this is the biggest divide. Here's what happens. These people are bloodthirsty. They're going to eject pirates into space. Yeet. <laughs> Why? I blame the word. I blame the word. I, this is this is the one time I have regretted using the word yeet. In you made it too to fun. <laughs> you made it too fun to murder. People just wanted to yeet people because of the word yeet. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. I think people I really. I think people really like were like, hey, we can't have pirates coming on the ship. We have to teach them a lesson. I really think that's what people were thinking. <laughs> but you know. you know, I think that some people just like to flirt with death. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, think a lot we've of collected us are bloodthirsty killers. In the RP. <laughs> yeah, I think we've just collected a group of players who uh, will 
uh, wake up and choose violence. Every time. <laughs> Which oh. I can get behind. <laughs> It's, I but, guess instead of, I guess, you know, we're, they're not murder hobos because they all have a home on, uh, on Freya, but they, they definitely, we definitely got the murder part down. <laughs> yes, we've got the murder part down. Um, Hobo might come into play for another event down yeah. the line, but we'll see. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. Which, again, comes from reading or skimming at least other people's threads. Yep. Seeing like, I... oh, hey, here's a problem I never thought about. And I know that this isn't directly on, on topic, but I think that it's important to point out that creating an environment in which we as mods encourage people to talk about other people's characters, but also where the players want to talk about other people's characters is so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not sure we how can... we cultivated it other than just talking about other people's I characters. I think we just do it. We just do it and people are monkey see, monkey do, and so they do it. I didn't even realize. Y'all, yeah. I've been running role plays with you guys so long, I didn't even realize. Apparently in other role plays, people only ever mention their own characters in the out-of-character chat. They never gush I... over other people's characters, which I didn't even I didn't even know. Yeah. But, I mean, I've been told, so I mean, and I believe you guys, sure. I've seen that. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? How do you not get excited? when you see somebody resting and <laughs> like that's exciting yeah what's that what yeah i, I think it's cool it. so i like i mean of course i don't know i guess because we all we all do it and uh and so that's how that happened yeah but i i would go back because landon you said that it's not directly related it's directly related um because there's no way for people who maybe they're like me and they don't really like to be super active in the out of character chats. If that environment isn't fostered and taken care of, there is no way that these people would participate in events. Mm -hmm. They would have no idea what to do with their characters. Yeah. And one of the fun things with events is having an excuse to interact with characters that you would not interact with otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, I've got a plot coming up with one character for this event, and I'm just like, there's absolutely no reason she would be interacting with these other two bozos <laughs> uh, outside of this situation. So this is really cool. Now I have these relationships forged. Yeah, and an event can do that for you, right? So mm -hmm. so as a, as a mod, you want to think about, like, how can I get everyone to be interacting and there's lots of ways you can do it you can even straight up force it like um we've had role plays before oh summer thank you so much for subbing that is so awesome of you um <laughs> uh we've had okay but what was i saying oh yeah we've had um situations before where um where we've like paired people off for an event like we used to do this in LOH all the time. It's like, okay, this is a battle. And we would like assign people who they were fighting in the battle. And it would force them to create connections with characters that they previously had no interest role playing with, you know? Mm. In Magic Reborn, there were the gift exchanges for some of the holidays. Yeah. And that was another way we paired people up. And that was super fun. Um, mm -hmm. In some of the spoof day events back in the day. Spoof day. Spoof day. Oh, rip spoof day. Um, I, there were people that, like, yeah, I wanted to write with. I had no reason to write with them until a spoof day happened. And I was like, hey, we could do this thing. This would be fun. Yeah, and then you see if the characters have chemistry, and potentially yeah. that comes into play in the future, too. And you see if you have chemistry with the writer, even. Mm -hmm. That's the other part, too, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I think we've kind of I think we've kind of covered covered a lot of like the basics of it, but I want to get into specific stuff too. So I know um, Landon, you had a comparison about like chat events well, versus long form events. Yeah, so we want to do I'm that. Like, oh. <laughs> that was something that Kendra had mentioned too. That the difference of kinds of how our events have been have run mm -hmm. has changed, but also how because we've gone from at least I think all three of us started in like chat based RP to now mm -hmm. long form RP mm -hmm. um, yep. sitting there and being like, okay, how did, how did events change through the ages there? Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, go Back ahead, Kendra. Back in my day. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Kendra, if you had comments on that. I just really, I think now trying to get like a D&D &D group to meet regularly and that struggle between four or five people. And I remember back in the day, the early days of trying to get 30 people in a chat oh, God. at once. <laughs> Those were times, weren't they? <laughs> they were. I remember paying for a chat scene membership so that we could have unlimited people in there. Oh my god, <laughs> you were the one that paid for it for your group? I was the one that paid for it. For oh my god. Group. And remember there was like no post order, so you just had to type out as fast as you freaking could. <laughs> if oh, you wanted your character dude. to be able to do anything. Um, <laughs> and you all had to, man, we had a couple of Australians in this group. Oh, wow. So we were, like, going hard on how can we all be online at the same time? Oh. When is this? Okay, I'll set my alarm. And it was. And we did have those, like, masquerade balls. We had charity auctions. We had weddings that would happen in real time. Mm -hmm. And that was very fun. I will never, ever, ever do a real-time event, probably again. <laughs> well, I mean, also, your life has changed. Yeah. I mean, life That's changed. why. Because my life has changed, and I just can't do that feasibly, and I cannot commit to doing that on a mm -hmm. regular basis. Yeah, it was no problem when I was, like, you know, in, in high school and college to set an alarm and say, like, well, I'll just wake up at 5 a.m. this one day so that I can do this, this RP with my New Zealand friends. And, uh, exactly. and no problem, then I'll just go back to sleep before class, whatever. Yeah, not a big deal. But now, like, I'm going to be 30. I, I have a toddler. I have responsibilities outside of character plot progression. Yep. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. Would I like to one day? I mean, maybe. In a smaller group, not in something with yeah. 30 people. <gasps> yeah. Oh my gosh, even even if well, we could make that work, 30 people would be too many now. It'd be way too many. I, no, absolutely <laughs> not. No, thank you. No, thank you. So now having the time frame where the way that events are structured in Karen's groups, you get a notification that an event is happening, and then you have to sign up for it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that is huge. So then one, you know who you can plot with, or mm -hmm. who you can be plotting with. And then you have until X date to get these starters up. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so I can explain kind of why I do that and why I think that this is the right way to do it for long form RP. Because first, people are all different time zones and different writing speeds, right? So you have to accommodate the person that wants to write every single day. Oh, oh thank you for gifting a sub, Summer. You're the best. <laughs> You're getting me closer to, closer to getting the sub points. We can get some more emojis, and then maybe I'll have some motivation to actually hire someone to make some emojis for us. Anyway, back to the topic. Uh, so we have we have a sign up process with our events, and I talked about this like in a really really early video. And it's because I truly truly believe I truly believe that just the act of somebody saying yes, I plan to participate gives them the buy-in so that they are like so much more likely to do it. Whereas if you just drop the plot, they might like say they're excited and be like, this sounds really cool and I can't wait to do it. And then life happens and things come up and then they never do it, right? But the act of having them sign up makes that far less likely. Now they've committed and everyone sees that they committed. So they're much more likely to actually go write that starter, you know, or actually go dive into someone's DMs and plot or, you know, whatever the case may be. So signing up is important. Super yeah, I important. never, I guess. And it lets other I... people come to you. Yes. Go ahead, Landon. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, maybe because I've been in your RPs for so long, like, I'm like, I can't imagine not signing up. <laughs> 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 then I'm just like, do people just like, here you go, have fun. Yeah, I um, think yes. so. Yeah, because they do. Like, I guess, and it's the, I, I'm well aware, it's the plotter in me mm -hmm. that sits there and goes, but then how am I going to know who else is going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> But see, well, that's, that's how not... I'm gonna figure out the plan for the evening. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that that is not the mod's problem in those groups that just let you go. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I know, but that's a me problem. And that's just <laughs> and, and there's something to be said. Parent. You know, and there's something <laughs> to be said for that, right? Like you don't want to as a mod be holding your players' hands. You know, because then you're doing all the work and, and getting none of the benefit. Um, but you have to still give people a nudge, right? Like, I'm not saying that you, like, hold the bicycle, right, while, while, they're, while they're riding their bike. But maybe you push them and then let go, right? So that's what we're, that's yeah. really what we're trying to do. And that's what the sign-up is. That's what the sign-up is, sign is, is that letting go. The sign-up is training wheels. Yes, yes. So it gives them, it gives them a moment to feel confident and like, oh, I really can do this. And then they mm -hmm. feel, they feel good about it. And going back to the environment that we've cultivated in the out-of-character chats, when we see someone has signed up for an event, everyone starts talking about that character. Yep. Like, oh, what are they going to do? Oh, that list sounds yeah. so fun. That sounds so cool. Oh, wait, my character wants to do that too. Can we plot? You know, mm -hmm. and, and then the event happens, right? Then the event yes. really happens. And then it yeah. pops off. <laughs> yes as the kids say <laughs> or my favorite is too is when the um hints start coming in the uh, <laughs> out of character chat where like someone will be like oh something's big coming and then i am not involved in that and i'm just like <laughs> but i what's coming and then i'm just reading everything too it gets me engaged in in other people's yes. stories which is good because you want to be engaged by other people Mm -hmm. um and and having those moments of excitement build up is like oh man they're gonna do the thing in the place mm -hmm. <laughs> and you want to be there to read it oh, yeah. right and i want yeah. and i now know i have to look forward to it because god if i don't <laughs> i'm yeah. not gonna be on it but yeah. i love it if i miss it i you know then you get the fomo right like but if i miss it i'm not gonna know what's happening <laughs> exactly oh, yes the one time FOMO comes in and is actually useful. <laughs> well, I think FOMO is very useful when it comes to hobbies. I just think it's not so useful when it comes to like real life because then it becomes like distressing FOMO. You know what I mean? But, um, yes. but I think a little bit of FOMO in regards to hobbies is, is a beautiful thing. In regards to that, I, I want to see X player's reaction when yes. this other character does the thing to theirs. Exactly. I gotta see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bingo. Healthy FOMO. Yes. <laughs> a little bit of FOMO is good for you. Yes. Just just as a treat. Yes. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I spent so much um, so much of my money on that last farm. Sorry, actually like the game. I keep forgetting I don't have any money. <laughs> In this stream, we grow many, many chili peppers. Sorry guys. <laughs> I you know what? That's you can have a little bit of spice. It's okay. <laughs> All right. So we let's talk about. So we talked about all these different kinds of events, um, and we've talked about the. Let's talk about deep dive because I think we mentioned it. But do we have anything more to say on the incentives of participation? Um. So so just to make it clear, I feel like we've kind of talked around it, but I just want to like make it clear. There's there's two main incentives when it comes to events, and you should be thinking about what makes sense for your role play. So the first and obvious incentive for the types of role plays that we are doing is plot, right? Plot incentive. Your character is going to get involved in this event, and it's going to change something for them, and that's going to be cool, and you're going to be able to build off of that and get inspired, right? So that's like the first and, and main thing, and that should always be there for the types of role plays that we're running, um, regardless of anything else. But a secondary incentive that you might have is like mechanical character progression, like the, the yep. point system that we that we have set up. And um, and I think that this is something where, OK, you should probably always have it when you're talking about like more crunchy games. Right. Like if you're running a, a tabletop game where everyone's like really crunchy, really into combat, really into that dice rolling, you know, then your events should it should always have some mechanical benefit. For example, cool piece of loot. Okay, this event, the ending of it, the party gets a deck of many things. If you've got a really crunchy, uh, people that really like that type of, that type of thing, um, they're going to love that. That's going to be a beautiful event for them, you know? So I think... Terrifying. <laughs> or terrifying, right. Uh, so I think, you know, <laughs> depending on the type of role play that you're doing, you have to hit at least one of those things. But if you can hit both, that I think is going to, is the gold. Like that's the gold right there. That's where it gets, that's where it's the best. Yes. Yes. If you can progress the plot 
and make people feel like they were able to add some kind of development or ability or stat to their character at the same time so they feel like their character grew along with the overall plot that is the gold that's what you really want and i i think that it's easier to achieve than some people think because I think that's something else that happens with events is that we see people go overboard with them or, or yes. bend over back, backwards to try to either accommodate everybody or make it this big, huge thing and it gets complicated. Um, and really, at the end of the day, you are just providing a different form or a different place or setting or scenery for people to create their own stories. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't have to, in an event, it doesn't have to be this over the top thing or this oh. overly complicated moment. Oh yeah. Oh, I've got a good example of that. We love if when there's a wedding, we love to make that an event. Um, you know, it's, it's beautiful. It's great. And you, and it's very easy to accidentally turn a wedding event into being just about the characters that are getting married, but it's so mm -hmm. easy to make sure that doesn't happen. Just describe yeah. the party a little bit. Everyone wants to go to a party. Okay. And make sure that the people, the people that are playing the characters that are getting married, Right, that they understand that like everyone's coming to their wedding. Their enemies are coming to their wedding too. That's just going to be how it is. Sorry, Charlie. Um... <laughs> uh, you mean sorry, Lulu? You're going to get punched <laughs> every time. At your every wedding. time, my boy. <laughs> you're just going to get hit. It's gonna At be your fine. wedding. Oh, At Bree's wedding. talking about a Cassian wedding too. Oh my god. <laughs> every time, yeah. every time Lulu, every time anything good happens to Lulu, he comes away with with scars and bruises. It's just, it's just what happens. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Naomi issue. It's also a Landon issue. It's a problem. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. Mm -hmm. We love it. <laughs> but yes, no, it's you you learn that like hey yeah if you want your if you want your wedding to be an event we will make it an event even if you don't want your wedding to be an event it's going to be an event um <laughs> yeah. but everyone if you're is getting married mm -hmm. yes. and then we've also done something else too that well, we had a in the last and i don't know if i don't know if you would consider this successful karen i did but in the last <laughs> rp in atlantis we had a double event where oh, we had yeah, yeah. half of the characters go to one event and half of the characters go to another event because there was a class and classism sort of break down the line. Oh, where yeah. Where it didn't make sense where lower class characters would go to this high profile event. Yeah. Oh, no, I do remember that. And I do think that event went well. Um, so, I agree. Okay. So, so we had like, basically, we had like a, a charity. There was a, a charity going on. And, um, and you know, what, what rich people do for a charity is very different than, than poor people contributing to a charity. We know this in real life too, right? So we had mm -hmm. a gala dinner for all of our rich characters and we had a, um, a pay what you want concert for our, you know, poor characters. And people could choose, their character could go to either one, it didn't matter. And, yeah. um, and, people, and people made that decision and they figured out how to make it work. Like if they wanted their character to go to the gala dinner, they couldn't afford it. Well, no worries, they just had to find a date that would take them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so they made it work, you know, they made it work. So it doesn't have to be hard, right? Like it doesn't have to be complicated. You just have to think like, hey, am I excluding anyone by doing this? And if so, how can I fix that? You just need to think yeah. about it. Like just give it a second of thought it, and, and it's not hard. And I think that that is, um, that is something that I want new people who are running, new, who are mods or new to being mods to understand. Because I also think that that's why people don't want to throw events is because they think it'll be difficult mm. or a lot or that they'll get overwhelmed because they have to read everything and keep track of everything. And yes, to an extent, but at the end of the day, it's, it really is just providing a different place. Yeah, I think that asking, I think asking people what are what are your characters doing is the key. Everyone wants to talk about their character, you know. Yeah. Everybody wants to talk about their own character. So nobody's going to tell you, you know. Nobody's not going to answer that question. There is not going to be a single person in your RP who is offended that you are not reading their stuff. And if they are, do you really want them in your RP? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like people. <laughs> I mean, like things take time. So you know. I do think yeah. that people should be making an effort to read more. 
you know, if somebody is really I, truly yeah. reading nothing, then I'm a little bit like, well, I don't really, I hope you're having fun. I don't know how, um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it, you, you can't, you can't read everything. Some days you're just going to get busy and it's not going to happen. You know, it's just, it's just, it is what it is. We all have other obligations. We're not role play machines 24 seven. Yep. And, and I think that it's also something that has come with the fact that we are adults yeah. and we, I mean, we've always been adults since we've met, but we are, we are adults with real lives. We're adultier adults now. <laughs> yeah, have, yes. Some of us have kids. <laughs> a lot of us have kids. Um, a lot some of, of us, us have terrifying. Some of us have, some of us, our kids are a little bit more interesting than others. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we all work full-time jobs. Some of us are full-time students. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, there is this, this whole thing of, we are adults with priorities outside of RP, so we can't spend 16 hours a day reading the RP. <laughs> I would <Yay>. love to. <laughs> that would be amazing. That's keep keep, uh, right keep subbing to the Twitch channel. I'll quit my job, and then I will, I will full-time role-play all day, every day. <laughs> Just, yeah, Twitch the, Twitch the RP. It would be great. <clears throat> Sounds uh, good. <laughs> yeah, hey. Um, but uh, yeah, so like, I don't, I, I think, I think, you know, it's like, it's like a balance, right? So if you can't keep up one day, if like you click on the role play and you realize there's like this massive thread that you're never going to get through, um, just ask, like, be like, Hey, person that wrote in this thread, what's going on? Give me the summary. I just logged in, you know, and they're going to say yes, because they want to tell you about their character. Cause they're so excited about their own character, you know? Yeah, or it doesn't have to be that of what's happening in this thread. It could also be like, okay, what's happening with these characters? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and or from or... a player perspective, having a mod come and be like, hey, what's happening with your character? Is um, generally very flattering. Like, yes. oh my gosh, the mods like my character. Yeah. <laughs> or they... also, um, if people Which are talking about are something in the RP because there's two characters that are going through a lot and the writers write a lot. And this uh -huh. is becoming more of a talk about how to keep up in an RP uh, stream than, than other, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> it's, it's important information. It's um, it's a critical part of running events though. So how yeah. do, it is. How it do really you ask? Is. You sit there and you go, where is this happening? Link yeah. me the channel. Yeah, link um, me, link me. <laughs> that, way, that way, also, if that means that this, this couple or this ship has written in four different channels with 50 posts in each channel and everything like that. And you have the most up to date. You kind of are up to date. <laughs> yeah. You can figure it out. You like, you can fill in the context clues and figure it out. You can then yeah. Skim. You don't feel like you have to deep read everything yeah. in order to figure out what is happening. Yeah. Skimming is your friend. Yeah. Yes. First and foremost, skimming is your friend. Yeah. When you hit a block that you don't quite understand, you can go back a couple paragraphs so and be like, okay, wait. Our readers uh, program that reads to you. <gasps> oh my <laughs> god, that has saved my life. Thank you, Jane, for for like showing me the light of like an online uh like vocal reader because I struggle sometimes, like my dyslexia sometimes gets in the way if I have to read like a huge block of text. Um, but then I just pop it in the reader. If it's really long, I pop it in the reader and uh, problem solved is beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, okay, no. But yeah, so I think that that is, that is as far as plots, excuse me, I'm so sorry. As far as plots and stuff like that, that's how you keep your characters or your, your people incentive to want to play with the event. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have a note here that I didn't add that was whose line is it anyway? Um, I'm looking cool. at it. Moving on. I'm looking at it. for <laughs> participation. Oh, oh, I was just saying, um, oh, I remember why I put this. The points don't matter. Okay. So if you are uh, going to have, if you are going to have points or things like that, like don't over, you don't need to over design it. Okay. You don't need to build your own functional, like tabletop role play game for you and five of your friends. Like, I mean, if you want to do that, if you are a game designer and you want to do that for fun, Go for it, but it is so not necessary. You don't need an entire tabletop system. You just need like a couple little things here and there because the points don't matter. It's just the fact that you're giving people points and the points do something. So like, just don't, don't over design it. That's, that's what I wanted to say there. If you, if you are going to make some kind of like point system for your events, don't over design it. It's not necessary. Yep. 
All right, that makes more sense. The place yeah. don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> That was like, supposed to be a note to myself to remember, and I read it just a, a little bit ago, and then I totally forgot what, you know, as explained something else instead. <laughs> well, all right, so we've talked about real time um, events briefly that uh, this is an event, sort of event, where everybody logs on in the RP at the same time, or everybody who can logs on at the RP at the same time. And in these three hours, y'all go to a wedding. Yeah. What is the opposite of that? The opposite of that is, hey, the event starts. This is basically the opposite. Of, I think it's how we run them. The event starts yeah. on yes. this day. <laughs> it starts on Tuesday. You can start putting starters up on Tuesday. And uh, you have one week to do all your starters. So you can, you can start threads from Tuesday to Tuesday. After that, you can't start any more threads. Okay? So everything that started, no more starters. But those threads that are that are started they can keep going for forever and ever if you want them to that's okay that's the opposite it's giving that people is, a time frame yeah. for starters instead of a meeting time to come and do the event yeah and your starter you hypothetically your starter time frame can be as small and as large as you want it to be yes so it can be i think ours is two weeks basically i mean you get like a week and a half the way that it yeah. is right now okay. yeah so yeah because you get you get the wednesday to the next saturday so not that that yep. saturday the saturday after that so you yeah. get a week and a half because you get a week to sign um, up and then a few additional days after sign up to to finish up any starters you didn't do yeah exactly yeah so yeah so you got you have all of that time which hypothetically with with our how our um activity works in our rp that means that guaranteed you've been on there mm -hmm. like you've been on the rp uh it's very hard for you to disappear for more than a week and a half without us noticing yeah <laughs> <laughs> if you some if you missed it you probably got kicked out in that week and a half if, if truly because yes. i don't see it would be it would just be uh, really hard <laughs> or you were or you were given warnings about activity all of that like you, yeah like you, you got at you would have gotten at like at least once or twice in that time. <laughs> it's a space enough that we know that we have we have lost you, or that you're truly just not interested in the event. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. so that it, it gives us time, and that's why I think that it is as long as it is instead of three days. Because I think that there were times where we did have three day signups, right? Yeah, that was Magic Perform, where it was like you have until Saturday to sign up. Yeah, and a lot yep. of people ended up missing it. And since we have points this time, um, I don't think that's fair. You know? Yeah. And, and it's also hard because um, if you work, you know, Tuesday to Saturday and post comes up on Wednesday and you have to sign up by Saturday night, you've been working that whole time. You might not be on RP that you might not realize that there is even an event. Well, you might like have just that, like opened it up and skimmed it and it didn't sink in what was really going on, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of miss there that, that I appreciate that we have the longer sign up now. But mm -hmm. that's up to you and your mod team. That's up to how you run your events, what your event is, all of that kind of stuff is how long and how short you want that sign up period to be, or even that starter period to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, and uh, if there weren't points, then we might have a shorter period. You know what I mean? Um, because it's like you're not you're not missing out. You're only missing out on plot progression. Um, and it's not like you can't engage in that in other ways. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, speaking of, I just realized that I forgot to put and mark that uh, Jim's post was an event post. Whoops. Oops. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You'll fix it now. You'll fix it now. <laughs> realizing things now, I was like, oh, right. That was a thing that was supposed to be done for, for an event. Oops. Um, oops. Right. Oops. <laughs> Me, I'm not always perfect. Just wow. I don't um, believe that yeah. for a second. You are always perfect. That's true. Thank you, Kendra, for recognizing that. Um, <laughs> also with the time frame is that currently how we've run our RP is that your threads can go on indefinitely. We have not always done that because we've made channels for RPs. Yep. Uh, events. So we have also given a time frame of you have a month to complete this, this thread. Hey, uh, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> well, it just depends, yeah. right? It, like, it all goes back to like, what kind of role play are you trying to run? What are the parameters that you want to put in place? 
if an event is purely for plot and I know that it's set up to where some people are just going to make a thread and they're just going to like, you know, dick around and, and just let that thread languish and let it go on for forever and ever, which is <laughs> what we, which then I don't want that to happen. Right. So like I'll give an example of when we had cutoffs in Magic Reborn, the events were all like what the village was doing for the particular holiday. Well, it's not going to make any sense if people are still writing the same thread six months later about a holiday for harvest, you know, and and so because I know that that the holiday threads are easily susceptible to that meandering, we're going to give you a cutoff. You know, at some point you got to end these threads. You can't just be playing Christmas for six months. You know. Well, now. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going to be playing it for a whole year, though. <laughs> yes. Every day is Christmas if you try hard enough. Yeah. So it just <laughs> depends. Like, it depends on, like, what are you, how, what's your event structure set up? What type of players do you have? What type of players are you trying to attract? How, what structure do you want your role play to have? Right. Like, all and of I that should come into account. Personally, and I think that that's necessary. Like, I liked that because also there we cannot count how many times those threads ended up on stale thread checks yeah like people just yeah. they they get bored of the thread and don't want to end it don't want to drop it because there's some idea that dropping is bad in rp yeah um which is not true but they don't yep. want to drop it so they don't want to end it they don't want to drop it but they're also so not interested in it anymore speaking from experience <laughs> this to self call um, out <laughs> yep where it's like okay i guess we're mirandering this along that it's nice to have someone sit there and be like yo stop <laughs> this is ridiculous at this point yeah and it's like mm -hmm. yeah you're right it's july we should really stop celebrating christmas yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah can i mean you... it depends can i can what you two oh, well can you do a lot of things we yeah. want hey can you <laughs> speak to that's why I come on here. <laughs> um, can you two speak to timelines? Because I know that there are a lot of people who worry about events in that they feel like they need to make sure that everybody is on the same page with every single character's timeline. Mm -hmm. So And I... how we have handled that in the past. Yeah, so the way that I typically, that I like to handle that is I like to just take it on myself. You know, and my players, players that have been with us for a long time, like, no, and will even be like, like, this happened last night. Thumper basically sent me a DM. She said it much nicer than this. Sorry, they said it much nicer than this. Um, where they were like, basically, hey, where's the group chat for the people part of the negotiations? I was like, oh, duh, I need to make that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thumper was very nice about it, right? But it was like hint, 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 because <laughs> they knew what to expect. Um, and that's basically how I like to handle it is I like to say, OK, everybody, everybody that signed up for being part of the negotiation for this event, we're going to all get together and we're going to say, OK, what does everybody's character want to do during this event? Everybody gets a chance to say, this is what I want to make sure my character does. So, for example, um, in Thumper's case, Marie, um, that character uh, wants to make sure that she gets the chance to use her uh, new awesome spell, right? Because she has like a spell tailor made for negotiations. So Thumper, of course, wants her to use that. And, uh, and so that's like, that's the ask that they put into the, the chat and everyone gets a chance to do that. And then we just talk and figure out how we're going to make that happen so that everybody gets a chance to do what they want to do. And then, okay, now that we all know, and we're all on the same page about everybody's wants, let's go do it. So then no one gets to so feel left I'm out. Hearing. I, I also feel like, sorry, Kendra, I don't want to cut you off, but I want to give no, my, no, no, please go. Um, do, I do. also feel like that this is, uh, a, a, it's sometimes for that particular thing, when there is something that needs to happen, like a negotiation, then it is that deep. If it's at a wedding and someone got bitch slapped across the room, it's not that deep. Just put uh, it in the general not... chat. Just put it in the yeah. general chat so everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> put it in the general chat so everybody knows. Or if you don't mention it in your, if you don't mention the, the event in your personal thread, that's okay too. Yeah, whatever. Um, Maybe you were in the bathroom that. at that time. Um. <laughs> The other thing is, is that this is also a point in time where you can let your plotter, your plotters go wild. I cannot tell you how many group chats Naomi has been in in the last three days. 
figuring out a series of events in which yep. her character will knock down a wall. Um, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And yep. how to get to point A to point B and how all of these <laughs> characters are then orchestrating, but Naomi is very much a plotter. And so that is something that she likes to do. And I personally also like to do, so I'm here um, making and enabling it. Um, uh-huh. and it's, it's been very helpful for the people who might not take that up. There isn't an actual group chat for everybody because we don't necessarily need to plan out everything. It's just more as a like, okay, this happens, this happens, this happens. Everyone's on the same page. Cool. Yeah. So it's more like, it's more like to make sure that like, if you have your heart set on doing a certain thing, like the example of Marie using her spell, you want to make sure that happens and it doesn't get written around to where Thumper doesn't get to write that, you know, like that would suck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that absolutely. would suck for me as a reader. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm excited to read that thread. <laughs> well, and and she's but, and they're looking forward to using that spell, obviously. So yeah, I'm very really excited yes. to see that happen. Yeah, exactly. Because um, when Thumper is excited about something, sometimes it's like oh. <laughs> it's going to be big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when Thumper is excited so about something, detail oriented sometimes where it's like, oh, yeah, when <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like the first the meme with the guy and the red strings. Oh yeah. Something, whenever yes. something comes up, I'm like, Aha, oh my god. Ha, ha, How many times I this. feel like I have been that that particular meme in an RP where I'm like, and then this happens, and then this happens, and then this happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, events let those people who enjoy that get that out of their system because it is something that the entire RP is involved in. Yep. Yeah. Um. So being able to juggle all of that for the people who enjoy juggling um it, it it helps with that need and that want and that craving yep but here's how you can make sure here's how you can make sure that um that the people that don't want to do all that are still taken care of right so so here's how we can here's how we can handle that um in this event we have pirates attacking the ship right so everybody that doesn't know that's the current event that's going on in in freya and um and what one of the things that the pirates do after they board is they have they make a run for some of the cabins and they basically barricade themselves in the cabins. What happens in between them docking and running to where they end up barricading themselves off? That's up for free grabs. And there's so much of the ship that they might have run through. There's no need to plot any of that. You can just make it happen and it's whatever. You know, because it doesn't matter. Okay. You want to, you want to kill. That, it's still that deep. Yeah, yeah, it's not that deep, right? Like, you want to make sure your character kills a pirate. No problem. There is this time span here where the pirates are running through the ship. Kill one on the way, and it doesn't make any difference. They can still, the rest of them can still make it. You know, to the cabin or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It. One thing that has not been mentioned yet is that when we do events and something big happens. Um, like what the vote for what happens to the pirates? Oh yeah, so we had to vote for how we wanted it to end. Like, did we want do we want to eat the pirates <laughs> into space? Do we want to send them back to their ship? Do we want to assimilate them into Freya? You know, and we had to decide that so that people knew what they were building up to. More than half of the group voted for murder. <laughs> they want to murder the pirates. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, are you guys for real? Uh, <laughs> That's what they wanted. What? Like, I get it. I just was shocked. <laughs> hey, you don't get to murder in real life, okay? If you're gonna get, if you're gonna murder, you might as well do it in a role play. <laughs> yeah, a nice, safe, sane, and consensual setting. This sure. is great. <laughs> <laughs> but these posts are, and even like at the end of an event, if something big has happened, it's posted in the announcement or plot update channel. Yeah. Yeah. So that everybody can be on the same page. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If nothing has been posted there, it is safe to assume. It's not that important. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yes. Um, and that I mean, was very hard for me, the first few events that in in one of your groups. Ah, uh, you couldn't, you couldn't get over thing. that everything might not be that important? Yes, that was super hard for me. And I was like, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> because I had come from a role play environment where everything was very much a life altering moment. Mm. Oh God, that sounds so much. Yeah, it, it sounds it really fun. intense. <laughs> that was that was just so much, and so to have it just be like, wait, this is just fun. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> and then the mods are gonna let everybody know if there's something that they need to know. Yeah. And like, if we, I guess the other thing with our role plays that can make events like this successful that I think some people are not too keen about is that I'm not scared to retcon. So if I forgot to tell y'all something and then you went and did something with your character that was wrong, um, you know, that's on, that's Aaron on me. I'm not afraid to tell you that you're wrong. I mean, I'll just, I'll just slide <laughs> into your DMs and be like, I am so sorry. I forgot to make sure everybody knew this. That actually can't happen. Is, is that, is that okay? Is that going to screw up your plot? You know, and we'll have that conversation and then you get an opportunity to, to just retcon it. Like it's whatever, like it's text. Just yep. go, just go change it. Like it's whatever. <laughs> it. No one saw it. It's fine. Um, I also think that there is something that happens in group in, um, in events that I am terrible at ignoring this advice, but I want to tell everybody else in hopes that they listen to this advice. <laughs> and has been the downfall of a lot of events or has been a, a big issue in a few of our events. Nine times out of 10, group threads with more than four people do not work. Yeah. Yes. Uh, unless there is someone really on top of it organizing, you go next, you go next, you get one post, to do this one thing and then you go, um, it doesn't work. Yeah, um, and I know that we're gonna end up with more people in the negotiation thread than we really should have, but it's just kind of, it's how it shook out, you know? Um, yeah, and but, yeah. That's, not a, that's not a, and I don't mean to criticize anybody or anything like that. This is just, I think also something to keep in mind and sometimes they're unavoidable, like with negotiations. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs, there are more, typically more than four people involved in a negotiation situation. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. makes sense for more than four characters to be involved in that. Yep. Um, it makes sense that, you know, a if there are hostages being taken, that there's going to be more than two hostages in a room. Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. like that, that is going Whoops. to be things that happen. And like I said, I'm bad at following this advice currently in a thread where it doesn't follow this advice like, <laughs> like bad at it but i also think that when planning and plotting and trying to put this together and when as a mod you are looking at what your event plot implications are you take into consideration is this going to cause too many group plots or group threads yeah like are people gonna clump up are, are, do you have enough different things to do where people aren't yes. gonna feel the need to clump up and have like t threads with 10 characters in them because those 10 character threads will take a year and a half to finish yeah and that is not an exaggeration yeah it will take nope. a year and a half to finish because there are 10 freaking ever with 10 different schedules yeah. and 10 different inspiration moments happening in that thread mm-hmm Mm -hmm. and 10 different writing speeds yes and 10 really different writing speeds and in positions in which they can or can't write and then if one person gets sick awesome if one person gets bored then great there that's a stale thread waiting to happen like it literally will take a year and a half yeah i'll take for freaking um, ever <laughs> yeah. yeah and so just keeping that in mind when you are building your event to not have a situation where there are more than you know if a bank is being robbed and you are opening it up for any character to be, to be hostage, I guarantee you at least one of every single couple is going to be a hostage. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> you're going to have, ten, you're gonna have like 10 hostages. So. You're going to have 10 hostages and then that hostage situation, especially if one Minimum. of the characters is the one holding all the people hostage, uh, is going to be a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And we don't, we're not all, we're, we're not like always great with this, right? But we try no. to have a variety okay. in, we try to have a variety in there, right? Like we try to make sure that the event has like lots and lots of different ways you could potentially engage with it. So if you already have like a ton of people doing it this one way, then you can be like, oh, well, I was late to the party. I have these other options still that are, that are still fun too. Uh, in the current pirate event, there were six different oh yeah no hints this of fun. like hey <laughs> is your character doing this or this or this or this yeah. thing later on in the timeline of this pirate event mm -hmm. what about this mm -hmm. well and Which even then i think we, helped yes that absolutely helped and then even then we made hostage a option 
but we also said that there are three rooms. Yes, I did that yes. on purpose. There is <laughs> yes. ten hostages. I mean, I think there is. Is there six hostages? Seven hostages? Something like that. Yeah, and then, um, like, there's an NPC ten. hostage, too. I think there's, like, ten hostages total, but one of them's an NPC. Okay, or something like so that. there are ten hostages, but it's being done over the course of three rooms. Yeah, which so there's really three groups. It's, it's four, yes. two, and two, or whatever. Or four, two, and three or four or four something, or whatever whatever it's something like that <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's it's nice because that means it was split up and like you said that was purposeful because you knew hostage was going to be popular yep. and you didn't want to build threads where all of a sudden there were 10 people in one room yes doing a 10 uh -huh. person thread yes you built, yeah. you built parameters around that to make sure it didn't happen yeah, because I because I knew if I didn't, what we would end up with is everyone wants to make sure they're playing a hostage, and we're gonna get forced into having this thread with like twenty people in it, and it's gonna be like pandemonium, and it's gonna nobody's gonna like it because it's gonna take forever. Yep. Or you're gonna have to limit the hostages, and then it's first comes first serve, which is against the whole idea of being. Able yeah, I hate to, that. I hate that somebody to, didn't. Um, yeah, somebody didn't get to do what they wanted to do because they they wake up at two p.m. instead of six a.m. like I do. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, that's crappy. And, and you do, you, we do this kind of event for the reason that we understand there are different time zones, different lifestyles, different things happening, going on. So that building a first come first serve mentality is going to be against it. At one point we did cap it. We did sit there and be like three days later, we were like, okay, there's like 10 hostages. We can't do any more guys. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> uh, but even then, you but it was a whole day. Hostages. You had a whole day though. So I didn't yeah. feel as bad about that. And, and that was generous. Yeah. And there was a nice enough spread of people signing up to do other things. Yeah. Exactly. So it wasn't like it wasn't like you couldn't still get your character into danger if you wanted to. That is still absolutely mm -hmm. possible. Yes. Exactly. So um so much there, danger. There was there was options, <laughs> which I think is an important part. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right. And then, um, do we want to discuss any more, like, plot implications that come with making an event? Um. And I what it means to, like, what plot implications mean, I guess. Well, I guess, I guess you gotta make sure when you understand with an event is that you have really unleashed the emergent storytelling potential of roleplay. And, like, stuff's, people are, you're, you're putting something up for people to be inspired. You're not gonna know how they're gonna decide to be inspired. So yep. be ready for your players to do something that's totally off the walls. Like you, you have to be, you have to do that like Dungeons and Dragons advice that we talked about in the, in the last, um, in the last episode where like if, okay, sorry, dog was moving. Um, if, uh, mm -hmm. if your players decide to, to go off and like do something that's not what you thought they were going to do, you got to roll with it. Like you just, you got to roll with it and you got to be okay with that. Yep. Because every time you post an event, you're opening that up once again. And I think, and I think that that's the exciting part of it. Mm -hmm. But I, it is the, it is that you're putting things at risk to part of it. Yeah. Um, which should not be a reason not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but still, I mean, it's not, it's not a reason not to do it. But it's like something you have to challenge yourself on. Um, yes. Because I mean, as as if you're a mod running a role play, it's pop possibly because you want to have control right but you have to understand that as a mod yes you get to control more than you do as a player but you still don't get to control everything possibly <laughs> I, I had to make that joke so much that i put it in the chat uh, <laughs> wow <laughs> yes wow. no it, i'm just saying i'm not wrong um <laughs> Yeah, I know you're exactly. speaking. I know you're speaking to a lot of uh, role play mods when you say those things. Like that's very relatable. I'm sure to a lot. Yeah, I'm yeah. just calling myself out. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> one of the two. Why not both? <laughs> um, and then very quickly, our last fact, which we talked talked on a little bit earlier, um, but that how do you get people to engage who don't want to engage? Oh, that's a good one. How do you, like, if your goal is to get everyone engaged, you're going to have some people that it's going to be harder to get engage, to engage. How do you try to balance that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Kendra, since I know you're like, you're a very busy person, right? So I'm actually, I want to ask this question yeah. to you in a certain way. 
Um, what oh. what has been what has been the things that have gotten you engaged, either in our role plays or in or in other ones that you've been in, versus like what didn't work on you? Like what what worked and what didn't work on you as a as a busy person? What doesn't work for me most of the time, and this is something that might just be because of the genre I usually lean towards, are the big free-for-all events where like, yeah, this event is happening, but there's only plot implications for a certain type of character. Mm. And, and like those like coronation events, those are a lot of fun. But generally, uh, about like at least 75% of the player base is not directly involved in that. Mm -hmm. And they do not have any incentive, basically, other than, hey, cool, this is a cool location I'm at to mm -hmm. participate. Because it's you're, um, you're saying it's like hard to build to build a party that everyone can really participate in because of the the nature yeah. of that type of plot. Yes, or like okay, well, there's going to be an assassination attempt on the king, and here's how it affects this character or this character group, this character group, this character group. Mm -hmm. And if you are not lucky enough to have foreseen this happening, you are out of luck for this event mm. mm -hmm. i'm just like okay i don't there's only so many parties that you really want to write parties are a lot of fun but you need more than a party mm. you need a reason for your character to be invested one of the things um i know i've mentioned spoof day and i know it's come up on stream a couple times yeah one of the things that really stuck with me about that was how each spoof day was super tailored to individual characters where the whole point of it was to play with your character in a way that you don't and I thought like okay that's really cool but I'm also the type of person who loves you know coming up with like 50 AUs <laughs> like oh what would this be what would that be and it was a nice little chance to dabble and be like, okay, cool, I can do this for a minute. Mm -hmm. Having the incentive in Freya's voyage, because I was not going to have Yumi involved in this event. At all. <laughs> she was not going to be involved. I was just like, yeah, whatever. But then, oh, well. <laughs> vibration. Oh, <but> then pirates. <laughs> yeah, but then one, vibration. As soon as... I saw what the event was. I was like, okay, well, now she has to be. And so now, because of that, now I have to figure out her next spell. Because I'm not like everybody else in that group who has, like, five spells plotted already. I don't think as many people have it pre-planned as, as it might appear. It's just <laughs> it's that the people that do a lot of pre-planning are talking about it. It's literally just me and Naomi. It's fine. Um, well, I don't know about I don't know yeah. about that. I think there are a lot of people I, that it, are pre-planning their that. spells. It's more than no, that, yeah. but I don't think it's as many as it might appear. No, yeah, and I and I think but... it's also changing with what people want from the plot too. Like that's the other thing that I yeah. think is changing is that, um, and that's what events events are supposed to be doing is that you if plot is changing and, and everything is changing and the events are doing things to change what people are doing, they might change their ideas for their spells or their character arc mm -hmm. that they want to go in. Like that's, that's the other thing too. So I think that that's the, nothing is set in stone until it's set in stone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah nothing sure. set in stone until you write it. Hey, Brie is pre-planning too. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, of course she is. Nobody is surprised. <laughs> but... Like, I really, and I made Yumi with the intent of, ha ha, cat girl maid, ha ha, <laughs> that's it. I was not going to do any plot with her at all. She was a meme. <laughs> she was a meme. She was just there to be fun. All of my plot stuff was with my cop character. <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, now she's the meme. <laughs> <Somehow>. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> hey, that happens, that, that happens though. That happens though. When you give yourself full freedom, 
all of a sudden, like, you're free for anything to potentially happen. Which might mean plot. And, which might mean plot, which might mean meme. But it's been so cool to be able to see the events, see what people are doing at the events, build off of what the rest of the group is doing. Because 100%. All my excitement for this is coming from the out of character chats. Mm -hmm. Because I'm out there all day and say, like, oh, it would be cool to do this, this, and this. I'm not going to do any of it if I don't see other people excited. That's true. Yeah, I think that's very true. And I think, um, I think that, that, like a lot of stuff that we talk about here on, uh, on Interstage Window, your foundation is still going to be what kind of uh, what kind of environment that you create, right? And that's going to yes. be the biggest thing that you need to do to uh, to run things successfully is to create the mm -hmm. right environment for it to happen. Oh yeah, I I just really like the environment we've created, <laughs> and I know that there's I really a lot like of the players in the chat, today. and I'm like, you guys are awesome, <laughs> just awesome, but. And I know that you said this on one, one stream a few weeks ago, where you saw aliens being mentioned in Thumper's thread. Mm -hmm. And you have like a little notebook and you're like, aliens? Question mark <laughs> for future events. <laughs> and it, it's that type of environment where just because I'm not involved with, I like I, the player, not I the mod, but just because a player isn't involved with the main admin's characters does not mean that they will not get a chance to shine and be important mm -hmm. is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think there are definitely role play mods out there where maybe your first clue that really you should be writing a book instead of running a role play is if your events are consistently excluding people and making people unhappy and that's just the truth if there are some there are some admins around your characters yep if there there are some admins that i know you're running a role play but what you really want to do is write a book and that and that's a thing and i think events is a, yes. is a place where it, that that shows if that's what's happening mm -hmm. yes Oh, sorry. I was reading Jane's. You guys make me feel very shiny. Well, <laughs> you are so shiny. That's, I right, mean, you're soggy, you of course. <laughs> any yes. last thoughts as far as um, events? Any last things that you guys want to talk about or anything like that? Um, I think it's about time to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. I'll give last thoughts. So when it comes to events, I think the most important thing that you can do is to... Oh, you okay? Sorry. Yep, that was my phone. Okay. I think the Aww. most important thing that you can do is keep in mind your goal is to inspire everyone. And every piece of advice that we've given, every experience that we've talked about where we've seen things go well or not go well is because we either, is how well we hit that mark. So whatever you're doing for your events, it's all a, goes back to like, is this inspiring the type of player that you want to have in your role play? If you look at your best players in your role play and they're not getting inspired, then your events are not doing what they're supposed to do, right? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So that's my closing thought. Landon and Kendra, feel free to add to that. No, I think that that's, that wraps up everything pretty neatly. Um, yeah. A, a events, wonderful right? bow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And events do them. Like, that's the other thing, too, I yeah. think that, that we're trying to push, is that there is there is literally no excuse not to. Yeah. Um, and also, if you're doing one on one, you might also be doing events and not know it. <laughs> you might be like anytime, anytime that you you are like, or, I'm bored. Let's throw in a curveball. That's an event. Or small mm. or small group RPs, I guess too, like where it's four or five people. Like if you're doing things like going to a masquerade or throwing a wedding or anything like that, that's all events. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they can be that small and insignificant, or they can be plot shaking. Yeah. Uh, would not would not encourage necessarily completely plot shattering unless you you know are prepared to let some <laughs> leaf fall off the trees but um <laughs> if you're if you're ready for that <laughs> yeah some some, yeah. some 
some RPs need it, uh, but it there are consequences, I think, to that too. Mm -hmm. um, so just that's what the purpose of them are there for is to shake it up a little bit. And if you're a player who kind of hates events because sometimes it messes with your plot, um, adapting is part of the, the fun and sometimes that's okay too. Yeah, yeah. I know that that, that that does happen. I've been bummed out by that in the past that I suddenly can't do a plot I was excited for because this event happened. But, you know, that's part of role play. If I wasn't willing to deal with that, then I should be writing a book, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. All but... right. Good All news right. article? Yeah, good news article. Hang on, let me transform this Quackberry real quick, and then I will save the game. I just don't want them to fight. I don't want to forget, <laughs> and they then they fight. Because this will this one will fight the other one. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm saving and I'll open up the article here in just a second. How dare you? <laughs> Shame on you. Okay, here we go. Taking care of your quack berries. I don't want them to fight. I just want them to have a good time in the garden. <laughs> all right, it's closing now. Article, 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 article. Uh, here, come over here. Okay, so we have Chicago man goes around buying all of vendors' tamales in frigid temps, then gives them out to the homeless. <gasps> oh, I love Aww. this. Okay, tell us yeah, more, Landon. So, okay, well, so as some people who live in the United States know, um, especially in the East Coast to Midwest area, there was a large storm that came through mm -hmm. and dropped quite a bit of snow and also dropped temperatures to a very, very cold temperature. Yeah. Um, it was super cold this past week. It's been, yeah, it's been super cold basically everywhere. There are some people who I know in our RP were talking about like, and I mean, this might just be winter temperatures because I know they're up in Canada. But I was like talking like negative 24 feel like as like is like it feeling that way. Ooh. So mm -hmm. very, very cold. I there's would die. <laughs> there's this man in Chicago who bought 10 dozen tamales. So over 120 tamales um, and decided to give them out to the homeless in Chicago. Wow. Um, and in order to feed them, in order to give them something warm to to eat, um, which I think shows the the small amount of activism that any person could do or make. Mm -hmm. This is mutual aid, right? Like this yeah. is real mutual yeah. aid. This is like, what can I do to fix this problem now? Let me go do it. Like, and this is this is the kind of stuff that we can that we can do right now. To, to try to at least put a little bit of good into the world. And this is not his first time doing it. He he talks about that he's done it before. Um, yeah, he's a restaurateur, so I guess he, he would know, like, where all the good and cheap food spots are, of course. Yes, absolutely. And um, that... Uh, he that he goes out and delivers them himself. He did it for he's done it for Thanksgiving, which um which is awesome that he's he's made sure to do parts of that. So, uh, the fact that he didn't go out searching, they just found him. Like as far as because of the vendor had actually told the um Chicago Tribune, so it wasn't like him seeking out. Look at these good things that I'm doing. He just literally is like, yeah, Aww. I can do this. <laughs> um. And so being able to do things, and then he also sits there and goes, like, donate to food kitchens, donate to anything like that. Food insecurity is one of the biggest problems here in the United States, and he's mm -hmm. very aware, aware of it and and asks yeah. people to do that. So I figure that this would be some good cheer about, you know, buying 1,200 or, sorry, 120 tamales and and giving them to people who, who are in need of them. I love this. In this article, it talks about how – um, what that means is that the, the vendor, the woman that was selling them, she got to get out of the cold. So she got to go home because he bought her whole stock yeah. for the whole yeah, day. And, yeah. And then this wasn't at like a, uh, this wasn't a restaurant, I think. I think it was just like someone on the side who like a vendor, like very much like hot dog stand. I think this was mm -hmm. like a tamale stand. Um, so obviously that this person didn't have a full kitchen behind her or a full restaurant behind her or anything like that. This was... This was someone who probably who probably grew up baking tamales and is trying to make a living off of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I love that. Yeah, this yeah. is beautiful. I love it. Just some, just some good news on this Saturday afternoon. 
Yeah. And um, beautiful. And we love to see it. We love to see any kind of like real mutual aid. And I mean, you maybe you yes. don't have enough money to go out and buy an entire vendor stock of tamales, right? But <laughs> uh, but things that you can do is like volunteering at a soup kitchen, um, yep. you know, giving extra money that you do have to to people that help with food insecurity. Um, I would say, based on the work that I have done with some of those organizations, can drives aren't really the best. Don't actually give them your old cans because um, it actually yeah. takes a lot of time because most of the time they have to go throw most of them away because they people give expired ones. So please actually don't do that. If you really, really want to help and don't and there's two ways to do it. Donate your time or donate money. Please don't donate yeah. food. They can get the food so much cheaper from like wholesale and things like that. Just give the money. Go, give money yeah. or time to mm -hmm. your lo and do it to instead of a national um, national organization. local. Do your local food bank. Every single city, every single town has a food bank, at least one. No matter how big or small mm -hmm. your town is, you, like, you have one. Yeah. So go and, and even if it's $5 a month or $50 altogether or even just $5, being able to give money that way really does save lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it <laughs> does. And it's been so important this year. Yeah. Yes. Especially. Especially this year. So, yeah. and, and unfortunately, even though we have vaccines and, and things are starting to look up, COVID isn't going away anytime soon. No, and we still have people that even once it's gone, even once everyone is vaccinated or as vaccinated as we're going to get, right? Um, that's yeah. like a whole other thing. But even once we get to that point, uh, it's going to still take time for people yeah. to, mm -hmm. to get back to work um, that have been out of work because then they're, we're going to have a flood on the job market. So yeah. it's, yeah. it's, we're, we're going through this at least until the end of 2021 again. So, um, so yeah, anything that, that you can do this year is important. I agree. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I've got for you guys today. Okay. Okay. Let's do outros then. Um, Kendra, do you have anything that you would like to show or anything, any social media that you want to tell people where to find you? Uh, you can find me at Drowfields on Twitter. Occasionally, I, I post silly things. Other times, I am begging for more niche content. <laughs> Brie gives you that, an applause. Oh, yay! <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, Brie. She sent you an applause. <laughs> yeah, Kendra's Twitter is really cute. Um, it's, you know, I, I post hot takes sometimes. Kendra never does. Hers is like full of just cute, weird stuff. So if that's more your speed, hers uh, is great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can post a hot take. What, what's my hot take? Um, I don't know. Do you have a hot take? Uh, I know you've liked some of my hot takes, but I don't think I've ever seen you post I like one of your own. I like a lot of your hot takes. <laughs> I, I don't usually post my own hot takes. Mm -mm. No. Because my hot take right now would be more single player story video games, please. please. Oh my god. I have no friends. I just want to play by myself. Please. <laughs> yeah, I do feel like that type of game has gone out of fashion. Um, it for sure. Has. It's really sad. Yeah, yeah, agree. That's a good hot take. I, I approve. I like it. All right, Landon, um, where can everybody find you? And what would you like to shill today? I would like to shill my TikTok. Sometimes it's amusing. Um, <laughs> you can find me on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Land in Maine, L A N D I N, the state Maine. Uh, it's a pun. It's funny. I'm going to, I, I think that's just my outro from now on. I'm going to just <laughs> over explain the pun. I like um, it. <laughs> My TikTok's hilarious. I stan Karen on Twitter and Instagram. I have some really pretty pictures of something that I bought today for my new, or not today, but for a few weeks ago for my new house. Oh. So uh, go check out oh. those on my Instagram. I'll have to go look at that. I don't browse Instagram yeah. too much, so I miss a lot of the stuff on there, but, um, but I'll have to go take story. a look. It's beautiful. It's in the stories. <laughs> okay, I'll go look. I'll go look. All right, so where you guys can find me, right here on Twitch, of course. We have Interstage Window, which is every Saturday from noon to two, which is a conversation, more of a deep dive topic on role play because, um, you know, I believe that the, the best way to improve, one, of course, is practice. But in addition to that, because I can't make you practice, is hearing from multiple perspectives, not just me. Uh, I also have a stream that I do on Thursdays. That's at 6.30 Eastern. That's called Artistic License, and that's a variety stream, which is just me doing whatever I want. It's just my hangout 
out stream if you like me come to that <laughs> um and then i have my youtube show which is spare room that is my scripted role play help content which goes up on youtube at 2 p.m on wednesdays all of this is down below i also have twitter and tiktok for my main social medias at it's karen terry and look i have this fancy thing now oh you can Ooh. click you can click them i put them in the chat you can click them and oh, um <laughs> yeah so you can actually go click them and find it uh my, my discord's also in there if you want to join the discord and there's all the regular normal ways to support me you guys know the drill subscribing to twitch patreon tips i have all the normals everything that every other content creator has um and that's it that's all that i have for you guys today um let's go okay i'm trying to be a better streamer you know better streamer uh let's find someone that we can raid Ooh. Okay, let me see who's... Wait. What? Yeah, I'm going to be a better streamer. I'm going to actually, like, you know, uh, contribute to other Twitch streamers, and we're going to raid. Okay, here we go. Um, ah, thank you for the thank you for the applause, Brie. Okay, so as a lot of you guys know, um, I'm do, trying to do better at networking with other streamers. So we're going to go raid somebody that I have... Um, been networking with in a, a Discord streamer server that I joined. He's playing Human Fall Flat right now, and he just reached 20, or sorry, he just reached 100 followers, so he's doing a 12-hour stream today. So we're going to oh go... Oh my god! Wow. I know, right? Um, <laughs> poor, poor dude, this morning, he drank a little too much last night, and we had the results of that this morning, so please make sure he's oh, hydrating. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, let, me type, let me type this in. Okay, I'm sending you guys off. Goodbye. All right. Go have go have fun in the raid. Um, Goodbye. Okay, I'm gonna let that count down. And and bye everybody. Thank you so much for coming uh, to the stream. And um, and we'll see you next week. Don't forget to make it a great day. Don't forget to be awesome. All right. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. bye.